Now to uh, the subject of good living and what is your idea of the perfect city? Should it be picturesque? Should it have great wine, great food or should you be able to make lots of money there? Well, according to a lifestyle magazine Monocle, Munich ticks all the boxes. It's come in first on a list of top cities to live in, closely followed by Copenhagen, Zurich, Tokyo, Helsinki, Paris and Melbourne. They also feature in the top ten. No Londoners, no New Yorkers, you, I'm afraid, are not on the list. Well, joining me now is the editor-in-chief and uh, chairman of Monocle, Tyler Brule, a style guru and tastemaker and entrepreneur. Among his achievements, the foundation of design magazine Wallpaper, and now Monocle, he joins me now from Tokyo. First of all, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us today. Can I just begin by asking you, it, it all depends on what criteria you use to measure which, what, which city is the best. What were your top criteria? Well, top criteria for us, Andrea, it, it's really about what are the number of experiences you can have across the day and whether those are, of course, social or business related or cultural. And that means the city has to have a great infrastructure. If you're going to get from A to B to C, you need to have the fewest number of, of speed bumps along the way. And, you know, Munich, uh, we have to say, really comes first, both for um, a local audience, but um, of course, for international visitors and travelers as well. I guess one of the things that surprises a lot of people is that New York and London aren't on the list. I mean, we've got Portland and Vancouver there. But a lot of the reasons that people move to big cities is because that's where the jobs are. Those are the centers where they have to work, not just where somewhere that's nice to live. Did you take that into account? Absolutely. Um, and of course, uh, if we look at Munich, it has some nice companies, uh, mm. Siemens, for example, uh, of course, BMW, Audi not far up the road. But yes, of course, opportunity plays a big part. And if you look at um, our top five cities, all of them, um, I think, offer you know, enormous uh, wealth of opportunities, certainly on the employment side and, and, of course, beyond as well, when you look at it from an academic point of view and also in terms of, of cultural pursuits as well. What about just plain having fun? I noticed there's no kind of Rio de Janeiro on the list. Ah, well, we, we added a special part to our index, which, uh, which you don't see on screen at the moment. Uh, but this year, we have five other cities which are perhaps not the most functional. And in the office, we were sort of calling them the slightly more dysfunctional ones. And, and Rio is, in fact, uh, on the list. When we were compiling the survey this year, uh, in fact, one of our first meetings happened to be in Rio de Janeiro. And we said, well, of course, Rio has a lot of problems, uh, crime infrastructure. So it would make it very, it would be very difficult for it to be sort of one of these top 25 cities mm. to put it alongside of Copenhagen or Helsinki. Um, but so to that other list of five, we also added Istanbul, uh, Naples, uh, Taipei appears, and, and also Beirut. So those are the fun ones. Are the ones that make yeah. your list kind of clean and green, but a little bit dull? Uh, no, I think uh, Munich, you can have a good time, not just uh, during Oktoberfest. Mm. Um, likewise, number four, Tokyo is, you know, is really an extraordinary city, and I think, um, and one which is truly around the clock. One of the challenges, uh, you know, with a survey like this is, is you feel slightly sorry for the big cities uh, because, you know, if you look at you know, a Munich, if you look at a Helsinki, these are, these are very, very small scales. So, you know, Tokyo does very well um, to, you know, to be a city of tens of millions um, and to, to still make it into the top five. Is there a commercial gain for cities like this? Are people in a better city, uh, based on these criteria, likely to be more creative, happier, more productive? I'm not sure about more creative. I thought you were going to say just uh, perhaps more productive. Um, I think, uh, look, at, look at Geneva um, at the moment, sitting uh, at, at the heart of Europe, and then the sheer number of, of major uh, corporates it's allowed, it's, it's been able to attract. Um, of course, the number of NGOs and, of course, mm. government institutions as well. So um, is Geneva the most fun place or the most creative place? Probably not. Uh, but people can certainly get on with life and have, and have a very, very good time. Mm. And is there something that the bigger cities, the Londons and Manhattans, can learn from this? Oh, there's lots that they can learn. I mean, you know, one of the, we, we come under fire frequently, particularly from U.S. cities. I'm sure there'll be a lot of letters from Chicago um, as soon as, um, mm. you know, we're probably off the air because this is the, the place where the list is premiered today. Um, you know, people from Chicago get very sort of feisty and fiery and, and despite their, uh, you know, their, their Stanley Cup win uh, because they say, well, you know, we've got a great city in the heartland of the United States. But, you know, crime is one of the, the key statistics. Personal safety, you know, counts very high. And that 
tends to knock off most U.S. cities, uh, and it does the same for Latin America. It does the same for African cities um, as well. But if we look at a London, New York, uh, both cities have to work on infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, London has to work on, on public health, um, also public education, um, and one could say the same thing for New York as well. And, and there are public safety issues despite all the good work that New York has done. Uh, you know, homicide numbers knock those cities off right away. Okay, well, we'll all be booking our uh, long weekend in Munich. Tyler Brule, thank you very much indeed.